perchance, you'll be pleasantly surprised to hear that many of us have caught a glimpse of the interior design of Starship HLS. It made its debut during Starship's major event this month, Flight 4. However, our focus during that time was likely on the flight itself, so not many people may recall seeing it. So on today's episode, we're here to dive into this intriguing topic and answer the question, what does the space that astronauts will live in on the way to the moon look like? It's been quite intriguing since the proposal of Starship Human Landing System to ponder over its exterior design, but have you ever wondered what's inside the vast space measuring 9 meters wide and about 18 meters high that's meant for the crew? During the live coverage of Flight 4, glimpses of the interior were somewhat revealed, so let's rewind a bit to appreciate what we've got. Here's a captivating view of a corner inside the Starship HLS. From this design, it seems to be the airlock deck, a crucial intermediate area for astronauts to transition between the spacecraft's interior and the vastness of space. I've scrutinized this image multiple times, and I find it hard to believe it's the interior of a spacecraft. Rather, it resembles the layout of a villa. If this design holds true, it would completely revolutionize our traditional concepts of spacecraft interiors. The entire space maintains SpaceX's signature white-black color scheme, adding a familiar touch. On the left side, the wall is cushioned with a simple hexagonal pattern, providing a sense of comfort. Prominently featured on this wall is a large square airlock door, currently equipped with a sealed membrane to separate different pressure environments. It's possible this door model is temporary, with more significant changes expected in the official version. Turning attention to the right, the wall adopts a more conventional design adorned with numerous small holes, likely intended for integrating electrical systems behind it. Positioned on this wall is a sleek, modern screen that blends seamlessly within its surroundings. This screen is designed to display data from external camera devices, aiding astronauts in observing conditions before venturing outside. Below the screen, a straightforward array of buttons is neatly arranged, promoting ease of use and user-friendliness. Overall, this space exudes simplicity, yet boasts a modern design style that creates a spacious ambiance. It seems perfectly adequate for groups of up to six or eight astronauts to work simultaneously. With these insights, we can begin to envision a remarkable spacecraft environment for astronauts. Personally, I'm eager to see how areas like the control room, laboratory, and spaces for dining, resting, or leisure will be designed. If you share my curiosity, let me know with a heart icon in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video, share it, and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on SpaceX. Check it out, these images likely stem from recent advancements by NASA and SpaceX. According to a recent update from NASA, SpaceX, and Axiom Space, a comprehensive day-long test was conducted on the 30th of April at SpaceX's California facility to evaluate the Starship HLS systems. NASA's report highlighted the participation of NASA astronaut Doug Wheelock and Axiom Space astronaut Peggy Whitson in this pivotal test. They donned spacesuits developed by Axiom Space, potentially the same suits earmarked for the lunar mission. This marked the first instance where astronauts wore pressurized spacesuits to interact extensively with the full hardware of the Starship HLS test prototype. The spacesuit used in this test is known as AXEMU, or Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit. It features a predominantly white color scheme and appears more compact compared to NASA's iconic pumpkin suit. However, it's not as advanced as the EVA suit SpaceX unveiled a few months ago. AXEMU is equipped with a portable life support system, or PLUS, commonly referred to as a backpack designed to sustain astronauts during extravehicular activities outside the spacecraft. Earlier this year, NASA conducted tests with the AXEMU spacesuit in a water environment simulating lunar conditions to assess its operational efficacy. Back to the test. The airlock deck we previously described played a crucial role and was highlighted as the initial phase. During this comprehensive test, astronauts suited up in full-scale airlocks. The suits were pressurized using a system located immediately outside the HLS airlock, providing essential air, electrical power, cooling, and communications to the astronauts. 
Astronauts also engaged in practice sessions, interacting with the control panel inside the airlock as mentioned earlier. This ensured that all controls could be accessed and operated effectively even while wearing gloves. Mobility aids, such as straps hanging from the ceiling, were utilized to assist astronauts in donning and doffing the Axe Emu suits. Throughout the test, NASA and SpaceX engineers meticulously evaluated the positioning of mobility aids like handrails, strategically placed to facilitate astronaut movement through the hatch seamlessly. After progressing through the airlock and hatch tests, the astronauts proceeded to the elevator. This elevator featured a design similar to previous tests conducted last year indicating it will likely be the version used in the Artemis mission. Resembling a traditional mining industry basket, the elevator included four surrounding barriers. One of these barriers had a unique design to support additional functions such as doors and ramps for astronaut mobility. The entire elevator structure was connected to the spacecraft via, via a pulley system, facilitating the astronaut's descent to the lunar surface from heights of several meters. During the test, Woodson and Wheelock operated the gate and lowered the ramp while wearing the spacesuits, specifically evaluating their flexibility, particularly with the gloves. The recent advancements mark crucial steps forward. Following the test, Logan Kennedy, lead for surface activities in NASA's HLS program, expressed satisfaction. Overall, I was pleased with the astronauts' operation of the control panel and their ability to perform the challenging tasks they will need to undertake before setting foot on the moon. The test also confirmed that the space available in the airlock, on the deck, and in the elevator is sufficient for the work our astronauts plan to accomplish. Meanwhile, Amit Kshatriya, NASA's Moon to Mars program manager, highlighted the collaborative nature of Artemis. With Artemis, NASA is embarking on a new lunar exploration approach, involving international and industry partners like Axiom Space and SpaceX. These partners bring expertise and contribute integral components to the deep space architecture developed with NASA's guidance and oversight. Integrated tests such as this one involving key programs and partners are essential to ensuring systems operate smoothly, ensuring astronaut safety and effectiveness as we prepare for lunar exploration. But of course, these are just the initial steps in the extensive preparation for the lunar mission ahead. Looking forward, SpaceX and NASA face a host of critical tasks. Chief among these most eagerly anticipated is the production and unveiling of the official Starship HLS prototype. As we find ourselves in the middle of 2024, the pressure mounts for its timely introduction. Currently, we see the nose cone positioned at the Starbase production site with other components potentially in various stages of production. Once completed, SpaceX, NASA, and Axiom Space will continue rigorous testing of the official version, likely expanding to more comprehensive evaluations. These tests will provide deeper insights into the living and working conditions for astronauts in space, crucial not only for lunar missions, but also for aspirations towards Mars and beyond. The urgency escalates further as SpaceX gears up for significant milestones next year. The first mission on the docket is expected early in the year, focusing on testing the refueling system. This time, SpaceX plans to execute fuel transfers from ship to ship, a crucial advancement beyond simple tank-to-tank -tank transfers. While it's uncertain whether Starship HLS will be immediately involved in this mission, readiness remains paramount. Following closely is the uncrewed Starship HLS demo mission, slated for the latter half of 2025. This mission will unequivocally showcase the capabilities of the Starship HLS variant, with roughly a year until its projected launch, the imperative for Starship HLS to materialize grows stronger. It must undergo rigorous testing and modifications to meet mission requirements. Undoubtedly, numerous challenges lie ahead as SpaceX and NASA endeavor to return to the moon. However, with recent revelations of the Starship HLS test version's interior and progress in testing, confidence in the U.S.'s next lunar triumph is bolstered. As we edge closer to the lunar return, stay tuned for more updates on the Starship HLS launch system and hardware. Keep focused and follow along for the latest developments. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.